What is going on, people? It's Elijah from my charge back. Before we get started, please don't forget to click like and subscribe. And if you've been the victim of a scam, please click the link in the description below. Now, folks, a quick disclaimer. You may hear me say things that sound harsh, and that's because at my chargeback, we do not sugarcoat things for our clients because the reality that you have entered into can be harsh. So, with that in mind, let's move forward with the 23rd episode of the Crypto Scam Q&A Special. Now, for this episode, I want to do something a little different. I'm going to ask you questions that you need to ask yourself. So, let's start with question number one. Do you know the difference between positive and negative accountability? What do I mean here? All right, we're going to start out with a simple rule. Hacks are where somebody just goes in and takes money from you. You didn't know about it. They just did it. Scams are where you had to proactively either give somebody money or give them access to take money from you. Scams, you had a role in allowing them to get money from you. You gave it to them. Does that mean that the scammer is not an absolute son of a gun who should give you your money back and go to jail? No, of course he should go to jail and give you your money back. What he did was securities fraud. But you did have a choice. All right? They had to call a lot of people or message a lot of people before they got to you. Not because there's something wrong with you, but because they have to catch people at the right time. You know that if I asked you a week earlier, a day earlier, um, whatever, a month earlier, or a month after, a few days after, you probably would have said no. You're human. You got caught at the wrong moment. But at the end of the day, you have some level of accountability. Now, the question is, what do you do with that? Because the accountability is to yourself. Negative accountability is to sit there and beat yourself up and say, oh, I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid. No good. That does not help you. Positive accountability means that you are willing to take proactive steps forward and try and fight back. And let me tell you something. 90% of people who get scammed do not do that. They will not go and try and fight back. So the question is, are you going to be accountable to yourself in that you are going to try and fight, whether it works, whether it doesn't work? Are you willing to do that? Now, this brings us to the next question. Question number two, are you ready to retrain your brain? So when somebody realizes they've been scammed, it's kind of like that movie, The Matrix, where Neo wakes up and everybody's wearing all these great clothes. There's a guy with sunglasses and nothing's real. It just looks very film noir. All right. No nice reality with steak and other stuff. All gone. This is kind of like coming out of The Matrix. Okay. Here is what you know. Up until this point, you know that when you ask to withdraw money or when you ask who for a refund, you're going to get it. You know that if you buy something at the store, you can take it back the next day and return it for a full refund. You know that if you go into your bank to withdraw $1,000 or 1,000 euros or whatever, the bank is not going to say, well, you have to pay a 33% state income tax slash non-money laundering fee and then maybe we'll think about it. And then a week later, they tell you that you got to pay another fee and you still can't withdraw your money. No, you know that you can go in and withdraw it on the spot. No questions asked. Right? That world is gone. All right. There is something that you have to do, which is train yourself to think for a marathon and to train yourself to think for a fight. And make no mistake, the world of 
fighting scammers and fun recovery is always going to be a fight. Whether it's something as relatively simple, and I say relatively because it's not actually simple, it's just relatively simple to other methods as a chargeback or a bank wire recall, or whether you're going, you know, every round fighting a crypto scam. Okay, every step of this process does not have those rules. Okay, it may take as little as three months. It could take three years, four years. I've seen it. And it doesn't always work. Are you ready to fight knowing that it couldn't work? Now, let me tell you something. All right, there are scenarios where some people don't recover anything. There are what's a most common scenario, which is that people recover a partial amount. All right, there are scenarios, and this is a great one because. If we're talking crypto, this one is, well, it's a much more real possibility than for other payment methods. All right, where, well, there's no money because the scammer crashed all the luxury vehicles that he bought with it, and all of the luxury watches that he bought got waterlogged because he drew it off, threw it off the bay in, you know, a fit of drunken ecstasy but he's going to go to jail for seven years is that a potential outcome that you can live with all right what is justice in that sense is that something that you could live with as a potential result obviously the result that we aim for every time is for everybody to get everything back but other results do occur all right are you ready to think in that respect are you ready for a world where, no, nobody is just going to give anything to you? Scammers invest a lot of time and a lot of effort where at a ethical job, they could have actually done pretty darn well for themselves, but they chose to do scamming instead. Instead of spending $50 a week or 50 hours a week, you know, working like a real estate agent or something, they chose to spend it on the phones selling fake investments. They're willing to work. They're willing to put up fights. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to train your brain to think for fighting? And that nothing is absolute. Everybody always has this question. What are my chances of this? What are my chances of that? You'll never know, A, until you get a KYC. B, what's the option? I've seen scammers come with surprises, and I've seen a lot of people with very good cases. Well come unprepared or with the wrong resources. And I've seen it the other way around. I have seen scammers that I thought would put up a much tougher fight. And it turns out that they're willing to just pay you to go away. All right. So there is a certain amount of inabsoluteness. There is a certain amount of uncertainty that's involved in this process. So can you retrain the way that you think, which means that you just keep trying? Because you're going to have to. Question number three. Are you ready to be proactive? Now, this is a big one. Why? Because most people, when they come to us, say, Oh, okay, here's a bunch of emails and a couple of deposit statements and some chats. Bye, call me when my money's back in my account. It'll be what, three months, two months, something like that? I needed it yesterday. That's not what you're in for. There is no world in which that happens. Now, this sort of thinking is a recipe for total and absolute failure. All right? This is a very proactive process. And it doesn't matter whether you're paying by crypto or by other methods. There is a level of activity in which you will be involved. Credit card or a bank wire case? Guess what? We're arming you to go into the bank and we're talking you through everything and we'll give you all the resources, everything, all sorts of other things you need. But at the end of the day, you will still have to go to the bank. Crypto? Guess what? You're going to have to gather a lot of documents. And yes, once your blockchain forensics report is compiled and in your hands, you will have to go to the police in person. And I'm not going into detail on this. Suffice it to say that if you are our client, 
You know this because Evan and his team have explained to you as to why. Now, we do things also where we interface with them as well and all sorts of other stuff based on what the scenario dictates. But you will have to do that. And additionally, you may have to remind them a few times. All right, and yeah, move on to stage three of that process. The actual recovery mechanism, we can present a bunch of options for you. Or, you know, if the police have chosen to prosecute it right off the bat, guess what? You're going to have to keep pushing with them. But you're going to have to make some decisions either way, and you're going to have to be proactive. All right, now this is the enemy, and this is what gets a lot of people into these scams. Quick, easy money, passive income. Oh, it's so simple, I just use a little app. Let me tell you something. Of all of the different kinds of scam victims that we have, the one that I find most frustrating that they fell for it are a surprisingly large group of small business owners. These are hardworking people. Okay, for anybody who owns a business, you know that everything falls on you. You own a store and a rat trips the alarm off in the middle of the night. Guess who's getting up in the middle of the night to go down to the store to turn it off and tell the police, false alarm. You got to make the end of the month meet and you got just enough to pay your employees and not yourself. Guess what? You're still working your butt off to do it. You've got to do some tax audit, whatever it is. You as a small business owner know what it means to put in 50, 60 hours a week, sometimes more. And a lot of you end up getting caught by scammers because you didn't put in the same amount of effort into this money-making path as you did into your business. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should sit there and beat yourself up, but rather, I am saying that you have to be proactive. And for those who know to be proactive, you have what I would like to say is uh, a better disposition to start from. And for those who simply think that they can tell somebody to go play fetch, I can almost guarantee you it will not work. All right? Scammers thrive because people are not proactive in fighting back. Now, moving on to question number four. Are you willing to take the steps necessary to prevent yourself from being scammed again. Now, one of the things that I think as a company we would like to see less of is repeat clients. Okay, people fall for one scam, they get their money back, and then they go and they fall for another one. You didn't learn a thing. You didn't learn to look for red flags. You didn't learn to look for what is legitimate, what is illegitimate. And let me tell you something. It can be tough. Okay, because you're not going to go the rest of your life and not try and invest for retirement. Or if you're retired, perhaps you're still investing for an even better retirement. All right, romance scam victims. You're not just going to not look for a partner just because a scammer took advantage of you once. Your life has to move on. And it's not as simple as saying, well, I'm just going to take myself out of the scammer system because in order to actually do that, you would have to change your name. You would have to change your phone number, your email, take down your social media accounts. Perhaps you'd have to sell all your devices to get rid of that IP address. You may even have to move and always use a VPN. Your info's out there. Okay? There is no way that you can live the rest of your life frightened of your phone. There is no way that if you're a working individual, you cannot try and invest for retirement. And there is no way that as a single person, you can simply stop and say, you know what, I'm throwing in the towel. Everybody out there is a scammer. You have to learn to continue your life and know how to prevent yourself from falling, well, falling victim to a scam. All right, you want to invest? You say, you know what, I'm only going to invest with well-reputed, solid brokers. I want to do it with J.P. Schwab, Morgan, whatever. Charles Schwab and J.P. Morgan, excuse me, it's early. 
Well, guess what? You know what scammers do a lot of? They copy websites and they make one minor error in the URL. They add an extra letter here. Take one off. Are you going to catch that? Are you going to read all the fine print? Dating. Now, Elijah has been out of the dating game for a long time. But he has friends that are still in it. And he has been informed that the entire thing is all about swiping and all sorts of other silly things. Here is Elijah's rule for you. To the single that would like to meet the right guy or gal. If you cannot meet them on the same day, maybe within the same hour, it's no good. Oh, I'm out of town this, but I'll be in town that. No, 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 no. If you cannot meet somebody within 15 minutes or 20 minutes, an hour or whatever, from when you're chatting with them, no good. All right, they stand you up, no good. All right, that has to be there. You're going to say, oh, what about uh, video chats and all this? AI is going to be a giant pain in the behind. Forget about that. You want to meet them in person. These are things that you have to do to move on with your life and prevent yourself from being scammed. And above all, when you see red flags, you say, that's a red flag. I'm done. I'm out because I guarantee you at some point during the scam that you underwent, you probably saw red flags and you might have stopped for a second and said, wait a second. But no. You got over that red flag and moved on. All right, six or seven red flags in, you're like, okay, I got it. It's a scam. Are you ready to stop at the first red flag and not give them any money or any information. These are the things that you're going to have to do if you want to move on with your life and not get scammed again. And make no mistake, somebody will try and scam you again. Okay? You're out there. But that doesn't mean that they have to be successful. You can move on with your life confidently. You can answer the phone confidently. Somebody starts pitching you about some weird investment thing. You can talk to them about real finance if you decide, I'm going to make a point of reading financial news every day. I'm going to make a point of reading crypto news every day so that I can talk this. And such and such, Scammy McScammerson calls you and they start trying to chat you up and they're very nice and all this other stuff. And you say, you know what? We're going to talk some real finance here. We're going to talk some real DeFi. And when they can't hang with you, you're going to say, Ah, you're a scammer. Good try. Go, I'm not going to curse on air, off. I'm going to leave it there for today. If you think you can answer these questions in the affirmative, click the link below to talk to us. And if you just like this video because you thought it was informative, click like and subscribe. I've been Elijah. We'll see you next time.